Unfortunately, he will. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm just going to look on in a few minutes. I'm sorry I'm not very organized today, but I know it's pretty much just a one thing. Um, I just wanted to remember the minutes for what day. So I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. 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 because it was really difficult to find anything else that we could cut out of this building um, without taking some really drastic steps. Uh, so we, went, we, we, we approached this as we would any other. Um, but a, a lot of, you recall, this first sheet is a revised sheet of the one that we did last time. So I made a couple of oh, changes on here based on our discussions. And the numbers haven't changed very much because we didn't really do very much that was much different. But in the last design development estimate, we kind of went through there and took out all the easy things that were easy to take out of. And in this last time, we went through and pulled out the kind of, other, the kind of next echelon of easy stuff to take out um, of the cost estimate. And so when it came down time to start cutting um, more, it became very hard to do. Uh, so we had a number of meetings in the office trying to brainstorm with some ideas. And we have put all of our ideas on the same sheet, and I'll get to that in a minute. But because we got no place in terms of finding other things that we could cut, it, we kept coming back to the fact that it seemed like the original price that we had was high. And that question kept coming up. How much are we really trying to cut out? Do we really are we really trying to cut out five or six hundred thousand dollars, or is that the amount that the estimate seems over? Because that's kind of what we've been hearing. That's what our impression was. Um, we got a little bit of feedback like that, uh, not with a number, but from Mark's review as well, that it seemed high. And so what we decided to do about a week ago was to send the cost estimate that we had done from right at Leverett Bucknell, along with the design development cost estimate we had done by DG Jones, off to a third cost estimator and have them do a peer review. Um, and so I don't have a document in my hands. But I call them up and I ask them to give me the summary. And the summary was this. It looks like the unit prices uh, on your most recent cost estimate are extremely high, way higher than we would have carried. We think that the unit prices that are in your design development estimate are a lot closer to what we because your more current estimate is based on more up-to-date drawings, the easiest thing that, that I could see is to take all of the takeoffs, all the square footages and all of the business that they calculated, and just use the unit prices from your design development estimate and fill those all in. And when you do that, it's going to pull your building overall cost estimate back down to where we think it belongs. And they are going to write that all up. Okay. And then when we get that, we'll share that. But I think we are going to, I think, in other words, what they're saying is that the real number is a lot closer to this number that we had in the design development. Which is? Which is about the, that number is? 5349 five, 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 three, 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 three. number. Yeah. So we um, we think we're going to be a lot closer to that 5349 three, number. Not the 5881. Eight, the 5881 eight, is, is the number that we gave. This is the. This is correct. Right. This is the 5881 number, which basically starts out as the Ryder Levitt Bucknell 75% working drawing. Mm -hmm. right? We did that, and then we made these corrections right here. Yeah. And that's what that total is. Right. But these corrections and these unit prices that we use are all based on the Ryder Levitt Bucknell mm -hmm. unit prices. And so we think they're, and, they, and, and this other cost estimator has confirmed that they are, they are too high. So we think when we get this analysis back from that person, it's going to be a lot lower. Um, we also did a little bit of research, and the most recent project we opened that's similar to yours, and in a similar part of the state, is East Forest Park. East Forest Park is a larger building than yours. They're about 17,500 square feet. Um, they opened their bids last June. That was $7.5 million. That comes out to $432 a square foot. Which is 
which is lower than any of these. Right. Yeah. If we escalate that up yeah. another year, mm -hmm. that comes up to seven point nine million dollars, or four hundred and fifty-three dollars a square foot. Four hundred fifty, yeah. four hundred sixty, maybe even four hundred seventy-five is about as high as I would expect to see your numbers. And even the corrected RLB number is at five hundred and six. Mm -hmm. It's just really, really high. Yeah. And that's a more expensive building, frankly. It's got more. There's not. It's, it's more detailed in terms of the masonry <coughs> exterior. Our masonry walls are flat. Their masonry is a series of piers. When you're building corners, they're more expensive. We've got some curtain wall at the front door and at the two ends. All of the windows in that building are curtain wall, which is more expensive a little bit than, than window is. Um, the children's department is octagonal, which drove the MBLC crazy, and has a kind of an <laughs> octagonal conical roof. And they also have a combination of slope roofs and flat roofs. And flat roofs are less expensive to structure, but they're more expensive to put down. The rubber is more expensive than the asphalt. So all, everything about that building tells me that it should have a higher cost per square foot than the other building. What type of material do they use as roofing? Asphalt shingle on the slope part and EPDM rubber roof on the flat portions. So EPDM is more expensive per square foot. Um, so everything is pointing in the direction that, that we really shouldn't try to pull five or six hundred thousand dollars out of this thing um, arbitrarily and then put it out to bid and find that the numbers come in way low and then we pulled out all that nice stuff and we don't have it anymore. Yep. And then so it's going to be a change to put it back in. And it would be a change, right, to put it all back in, which I, which I think would be a shame. And so um, with that in mind, we did go through and do a value engineering analysis for you. Um, and the things that we could find over and above the things that we had already found. Which we all agreed on last week. Which we agreed on last time. Yes. Yeah. The additional things that we have found um, that you could pull out of the base bid and either make an alternate or take out completely are in this kind of small section here called value engineering. And it only comes up to $134,000. Um, and that is, so I'll go through. We have a, a laminated shingle, asphalt shingle roof on the on the roof right now. That's what's carried in the estimate. And this first suggestion is to go to a three tab shingle. Three tab shingle is your kind of traditional asphalt shingle that every house in the world had on it until about 20 years ago, um, when they started doing laminated shingles. Laminated shingles is supposed to look like fancy shingles. They're supposed to look like wood. They call them architectural right. shingles, although that's just yeah. a branding thing, right? right? You can get them to look like slates and all this other business, and they usually have they put the gravel on them to make like to make it look like shadows to give them more depth than they really have and things like that. But they are more expensive, uh, and they're more expensive to buy and they're more expensive to put up because they're heavy and they take more labor and stuff like that. Um, so you could save a fair amount of money if you went with a three tab shingle. Okay. So that's the first suggestion, um, and you could either just take that out and do a three tab shingle, or you could make the laminated shingle as a as part of one of the alternates. I wouldn't add another alternate. I'd pick some to add it to, uh, potentially. Uh, the next one down is, I guess, another potential alternate, and then it's to put epoxy paint on the walls in the toilets in lieu of ceramic tile, and then to do the ceramic tile on the walls as an option. Ceramic tile's got a lot of labor, and you're gonna buy the materials, and epoxy paint is durable, and you could scrub it and it's easy to take care of and it meets the health codes. What were those, what was it, full length, full height ceramic or just half? Full height ceramic is what we have in the plans. Why can't we go half? You can. I typically don't recommend it because there's so many things mounted on the walls in a toilet oh. that you will invariably split something. Mm. And you know, you've got a fire alarm beacon that's got the tile half in and half out of it yeah. and it's got a flange on it and there's something missing at the top. Or you have a mirror that rocks back and forth. There's always something. And so we have found that anytime you try to save by doing that, you get in there and there's always these funny little things where they have to run tile up and around something and it always looks a little off. So, what, so the epoxy paint uh, is like over drywall? Yep. Any libraries that have it? Um, not that I can think of. <laughs> so these aren't high use. I mean, yes, there'll be a lot of people using it, but I'm thinking of, okay, my boy is showering at home, and I have paint, and they don't, so 
put on the fan and they use too hot water, right? I mean, so our bathrooms at home probably are getting more intensive use. Yes, than, but an epoxy paint yeah. is going to be better than what right. you would have on a little right, epoxy exactly. Very That's what I'm saying. Right. What does it look like? It look any looks like any other paint, but it's, but it's, it's much it's more durable, like scrubbable. Paint. Yeah, it's, it doesn't tend to paint any color we want, right? You could paint it whatever mm -hmm. color you want, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a plus. What did you say, Lynn? Isn't it? Isn't the epoxy paint a very hard, shiny surface? You can get it very shiny. Um, you can get matte. Uh, you could get matte, although I wouldn't or recommend matte, matte or like because it, it's got a tooth to it and it, right. it'll hold onto the dirt. How, but, how about emissions or smells? Or, you know? uh, well, this is a lead building, so no. <laughs> you can get, it's going to be a, a, a VOC. A, or something. You can get a low yeah. VOC. A low VOC epoxy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what it would be. And then put the tile in as part of an alternate. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody have any objection to doing that? Well, for durability reasons, I, I, agree. I think there's a real strong argument to be made for tile if money is there. Well, could it be an alternate? That's what the suggestion yeah. was. Yeah. 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 Um, the next one, the drywall soffits in the cost estimate were reasonably mm -hmm. expensive. But there's a lot of them, and there aren't a lot of them that you can really take out because really what they are is they're the, they're the line between the higher, the different elevations in the ceiling. So a lot of them don't really have time. But if you look for just purely decorative soffits, the only one that's really in there is the soffit in the meeting room. We have a, a soffit that runs all the way around the perimeter of the large meeting room, and then there is a raised acoustical ceiling tile section in the center. Mm -hmm. um, if you take that all out, you could save a little bit of money, but you need to add some acoustical tile back in. Yeah. And so yeah. the, the difference is about thirteen dollars a square foot. The square footage isn't very big. So I was hoping maybe that would be a bigger number, but it's not. Um, I'm not sure that one's even worth doing for yeah, five grand. I don't. I don't think <laughs> for the kind of visual impact it's going to have right. in the room. Yeah. Um, but the other one, the next one down, is one that I should have found before, and I don't think that this is going to be giving anything up. Um, you'll recall the reflected ceiling plan from the electrical engineers had those crazy yeah. round lights all over the place. Well, that was in the cost estimate. Um, and what we are proposing is linear lights that are laid into the ceiling, and they are much less expensive. Each one of those lights range from three to $5,000. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of them. So we took them all out, and then we had to do a correction. The next line down is an ad to put the linear lights back in. You can see it's 40 grand less to do that. So that was that's kind of a no-brainer. That that really is a correction. Can you describe what the, what linear lights what that means? Is um, so it's not like that, <laughs> but it's uh, like over the over the stacks. Is it like that? Are they suspended from the ceiling? No, they're actually recessed into the ceiling. I, uh, no, what's happening on that? Photograph that you're showing me is that those lights are mounted on the walls under the windows. Oh, oh it's, and that's reflected light. And they're shining oh, okay, light. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is in the window, in the high ceiling, we have an acoustical ceiling tile that's linear that runs along the long length of the building. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do is replace one of those linear slots in the ceiling with a light fixture. It's about six inches wide. It's an LED fixture, and it's going to provide general lighting down into that space. Um, so it's completely recessed when, you, when it's going to be kind of smooth looking. Um, so second floor of self hat. There's a wood ceiling in there, mm -hmm. kind of wood slats, and then there are lights that are kind of built in flush to the bottom of those ceilings. Mm -hmm. So it would be similar to that. And that is what provides the majority of the That's what provides the majority of the layer center. in that center space. And That's right. Yep. And all hanging lights would be removed from the plan. Those big round ones? Yeah in that main space. There's still some in young adults and in the children's room and we leave those. Okay. But in the previous lighting plan, it was the of light was coming from the hanging lights that were in that Those space. big round things, that's right. Yes. They were different shapes and different Dif yeah, different sizes yeah. of rings. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. right. And they were all kind of spread yeah. up in that space kind of at random. Right. Okay. I mean I think that's I think that's kind of a shame aesthetically to, to pull those out because I think it, that was gonna be one of the nicer Oh. That was uh that was my lighting engineer making an attempt uh, and me telling them that that wasn't going to match. It wasn't going to look good in the building. Mm -hmm. So, sorry to disappoint, but I would not recommend that type of lighting in the entire building. Mm -hmm. 
Well, it's, it's in that, that it's in the whole main space like, that seems the hanging round lights in that main space. Like I think it's just going to be too much. It doesn't. I don't think really fits with the overall feel of the space. Mm. It just seems too mod. Well, arbitrary mm -hmm. um, in that space. Mm. I thought you've done it. You, you have similar lighting plans in other libraries that we have. I, I believe I've seen that in some yes. Uh, will we have a series of lights like that hanging in a yeah. large open space like that? No. Okay. We work better in a smaller space, I think. We have done some v uh, varied lighting hanging from the ceiling in the children's department in some libraries. The Lunenburg Library and Children's Department, for example, has a series of kind of round globe lights that hang. Right. We were there. Yeah. Uh, that hang in different elevations and so forth. This kind of a mixture there. And the children's department in Townsend. We did something similar, mm -hmm. um, but I can't. In the young adults department in Hockington, we have the same ring fixture that I think they're suggesting. Yeah. Um, all of the young young adults department in there, um, but that room is probably half the size of this floor, mm -hmm. which is not as large for an open space as that. I can't think of one. Arbitrary lighting. I think, I think yeah. the chipotle, I thought I had a picture of it. The oh, in the entryway, the like foyer? It was in the reading room area. They had these things that hang down and they look like flying saucers. And they were, they had a, like a bronze kind of a. I may have it here somewhere. But I thought it looked pretty nice, but. Oh, kind of a bowl shaped yeah. fixture. Yeah. I was going to say half an orange, but a bowl. Yeah, half an orange. <laughs> yeah, that's the technical term. Yeah. Yeah, we, we did bowls in some of our libraries uh, kind of earlier on. So Pembroke, I know, has bowl fixtures in the main space. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of in pairs that run down the center of the space that hang with kind of chains on them. Did it pose a cleaning issue, maintenance? Um, they were, uh, well, a little bit. Uh, and, you know, and you got to get up and relamp them. Yeah. Well, with an LED, like, you don't need to. So we can just put them up there and well, forget about them until they go bad and then you get hire yeah, mm -hmm. well, then you get to hire an electrician to go in and replace yeah. them anyway. So mm -hmm. it's not like changing. Well, these, the other ones would be LEDs yeah, too, wouldn't they? Hmm? Wouldn't the uh, wouldn't the globes be LED the, too? The, uh, well, in Pembroke, that was the first library we did, so that was probably that was before oh, the LEDs yeah. were around. They probably had metal halide lamps in them. So <laughs> <laughs> contact Bill, did you say those lights that you're um, suggesting we take out are are the same as in um, the Lunenburg Children's Room? It, are they the round globes? No, it's a different it's shape. A, it's, a, it's a it's a large ring. A ring. Is, is that? Oh. I can't see. Is it Yeah, that's a bowl fixture. Yeah. So that's what you would not. That's what we would originally think no. about. No, no, there was never a bowl. No, no that's that's very nineteen. Actually, that was one of the Home Depot uh, lights, but yeah. bigger. Yeah. No, I wouldn't do that anymore. You wouldn't do it. Okay. you got to have something to date it, right? So that when... So when archaeologists look at it. Yeah, that's yeah, right. So if somebody... Looks like which year are these? What vintage are these? 2020? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Well, is this something that we have to decide on tonight? Because, I mean, this seems like a, a fairly major change um, to the feel of the interior of the of the building. I mean, I, I think I suspect that probably most people just want to get this resolved and move on. But I, I feel like this is kind of a uh, we could we could leave that one because um, I have to come back. I think with the confirmation from the cost estimator that's doing the peer review mm -hmm. because the real. The real question that I think we're trying to get at here is, you know, wh where's the low bid going to come in? I mean, I don't really know. And I normally have a much better sense at this point than I do here. Uh, I don't have any confidence in that 75% cost estimate. I think it's way too high. But I also don't have enough confidence in what the number will actually be that I could advise you on, on just putting it out the way it is. Yeah. So once we hear back from that person and they give us a better idea about what's going to cost, you'll have well, we'll have a lot better idea about what really needs to come or what needs to go. Okay. 
in the meantime, we can go and look at South Hadley. If that, are there any other examples of that that you can think of that we should look at? But is that the best example of South Hadley for where you're, for where a similar lighting plan is? For these li linear, linear lights? Yeah. Around here, probably. Yeah. Okay. And that's where, that's where the library is, second floor? Uh, I think it's on the first floor in the children's department mm -hmm. and on the second floor in the reading area, if I remember correctly. Um, th that one, you know, it's kind of an arc shape, right? And the, and the, the wood, I think, runs left to right, and so the, 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 lights, the lights run kind of in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. we, we, we th we're thinking of running in, in this direction. And we also have deeper beams mm -hmm. in this building four feet, almost, compared to the ones in South Hadley, which are short. And so our, our ceiling kind of overall is much more kind of cellular than that one. And so when you're kind of standing back and taking the long view, once you get past the first or second bay, you're not even going to see the light. And that's kind of the idea, is to bury that up in there. And they just have it below. Um, rather than have something that's kind of loud. Yeah, those rings are meant to be seen and noticed, right. versus these right. are meant to just kind of go away and provide the light. Do those so. rings need to be cleaned? Oh, sure. They'll collect dust. Anything that is up there will collect dust. But you'd have to be looking for it, I guess, to see yeah. it. Or wait for it to get thick enough that it starts to roll over the edges. <laughs> <laughs> That'd take a while, though. Uh, Phil, backing up one to the bathrooms, the epoxy paint in the bathrooms, if you took the tile away, does that take the need for a foul bid away on the ceramic? Is there what ceramic is left other than the entry floor or something like that? Well, we have floor and base in all those rooms stays, so this is just the walls. Okay. Um, so it may, um, it may actually, yeah, it may take away, because it's probably, yeah, more than, the wall tile is probably more than half of the yeah, tile. Yeah, So probably would take it away. Something to think about. I mean, if ceramic tiling is a filed sub bid requirement, and if it's over twenty five thousand dollars, you have to file sub bid. And if it's under, and it probably is, if you take this out. Although, if it stays in as an alternate, the overall amount would be over twenty five. Right. I mean, it would have to stay. Right. So you'd have to delete. If it was an alternate, I, you're we're, you're teetering on for me too many alternates. So I, 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 I agree. That's why I'm saying you'd have to combine these with something yeah. else. Now, if you we have one, for example, that we're considering for. Uh, wood paneling inside. Um, I suggested last time when we talked about the potential of doing stone in the front lobby that we can include that as kind of an interiors upgrading package. We, we decided against the stone flooring completely, but you could certainly put the tile in there with the stained wood as a kind of an upgrade to the finishes inside. That seems that makes sense to me. Rather than add another one. It makes sense, but I, I, I could see the argument of let's take the wood in lieu of the tile, or mm -hmm. vice versa, yeah. not yeah. And not both, yeah. either or. Right. Yeah. yeah, I'd rather spend the money on the public spaces, exactly. not the bathroom. I right. mean, that's exactly. just me. Yeah. But unless you did, unless you did the, the tile as a as a the last alternate, and you and you, you added in the stone floor and said, you know what I mean. Yeah, but the everybody's other decided that they didn't. They weren't interested in spending yeah. the additional money we're for that. We're concrete. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it on. Because <laughs> if you go back to the first sheet, I have combined the upper and lower standing steel metal roofs into a single lot. Right. Which is yep. so yeah. right. Um, I would I would suggest that you think hard about whether or not you really want to ask for an alternate number for that. So yeah, if we took that out, it wouldn't be an alternate at all. Right. Yeah, one less alternate. Right. right. You could certainly have a price. I think it's extremely expensive, and I'm not sure that you will get there. Yeah. I don't know. Phil, I could we put a mural in the bathroom in the children's room, like paint a mural? Is that you, a possibility? You could certainly. That's hard for me to bid, but you could certainly do that as part of your furnishings budget or something. We could certainly prepare or just the wall get a, for you to have somebody that done. to donate. Yeah. You know, I wasn't thinking of paying anything. I'm just saying. Oh yes. Because um, yeah, I, I've seen up in Greenfield they have the most wonderful. Um, mural of animals reading books on trees. Anyway, I saw it at a daycare and I was like, holy mackerel. Um, and I, that gave me the idea. Like, it would be hard for me to give you a wall that is completely plain with nothing on it. No, no, no. You could, so it would have to get painted yeah, around yeah, yeah. things that are That's on there. That's just how um, murals go. And I think the, the, I think I the health code would say that you couldn't do it on the wall that the toilet and the sink are mounted mm -hmm. to, but you could do it anywhere else. Yeah. The opposite wall would be the best. Uh -huh. 
Anyways. If you're sitting down, you have to look at it. Yeah. Chance to do it like they did. They have under the stairs at Hopkins. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. get the yep. Someone will do it. it. It's, it's in the elementary school as well. Yeah. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, we've had them done. We've had, uh, in Dudley, they did a mural uh, high on the sockets in the children's department on both sides mm-hmm. of a high space they have in there with balloons floating over the town. Once the building's built, we can do a house. Yeah, right. well, that's right. I mean, that's something <laughs> that have. we can add any time, right? right? Like at the elementary school, yeah. every year they paint a different mural. So yeah. over time, the yeah. whole thing becomes a mural. Sure. So we so, just we just yeah. painted those walls white, and then the muralists come in afterwards. Mm-hmm. Sure. So then you wouldn't want that one Walls. Right. right. I think the point is that it's a lot easier to do it on a drywall, painted wall, than right. a ceramic wall. Right, right. No, I'm just saying, I agree with, with Allison. I think we could, you know, skimp in the bathrooms and put money in the public atrium where we walk in. Mm-hmm. Or you could always, you, you know, leave it, leave it out in the base bid, and then if, if the budget allows, Add tile, add wall tile back in in some bathrooms. And some you leave blank for a mural, some you add in or something like that mm-hmm. instead of front loading it now. Because it has the potential of saving a lot of maintenance down the line. And that's why, yeah. you know, yeah. the time. Right. Yeah. Is it common um, that trees and shrubs are considered an alternate? Is it common? Yeah. Uh, yes. But only because it's so easy to do. Because you can use whatever leftover contingency money you have at the end of the project, because nobody's putting them in when you're halfway done. It, it's the last thing yeah. they do yeah. on the way out the door. Yeah. Right. So you'll be able to look at your contingency budget, and if you didn't take it as an alternate, it's often the last alternate as well. So if you didn't get to it as an alternate, you could do something very similar to that alternate at the end of the project and add it back in with contingency money. Oh, we can sell so, those. So you don't. Word. I mean, otherwise, whatever money you have left over, you probably have to turn it back over to the town. Now's the opportunity. Right. Yeah, we, oh. you know, we all want those trees. We'll get them. And we'll get them. One way or another, you're going to have to do some of it in order to yeah. satisfy the planning board. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, yeah. Aesthetically. Well, yeah. No, it's, it's, yeah. 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 I can't imagine us not wanting to put trees in one way or the other. Go by crook. One of the big lifts for your planning board requirement is the hedge that's already there. Yeah. Right. 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 You got it made. Right. 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 Yeah. 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 It's too bad it didn't go all yeah. the way down. Yeah. 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 Uh, Phil, because of the size of the standing seam roof, even though that's something that everybody wants, but if that is or could presumably prevent you from getting to the stained wood and yeah. Yeah. shrubs, should should we consider, we don't have to do it tonight, but reordering the, and, and if either take it out or put it last so that if, if the numbers are great and we get there, yeah. good for everyone, but it's not going to prevent you from doing wood trim or lighting tile in the bathrooms or whatever. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I'm probably the biggest proponent of the standing scene and I fought for it at town, town meeting, but um, if it's a choice between that big ticket item and getting stained wood inside the building, it's no brain for me. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, we may have to replace the roof in 30 years, maybe it'll be fantastic solar roofs that you right, can put right. in, you know, and, and that's down the road. We'll get, we'll get 30 years out of this roof. But once we make a decision about the trim inside, it's, it's going to be pretty hard. Right, we'll right. be stuck with yeah. that right. for a hundred years. Um, so I guess I, I, I'm with you, Mark, that we should think about the order. But first, let's see what we're putting on it before we right. start ordering. So let's go back to this value engineering list. And I think everyone was fine with the removing the 5,400 off it. Yes. yes. Any mm-hmm. objections? No. Um, oh, wait, wait. This is the one in the meeting room. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. Five thousand dollars. We're gonna leave it as is. We're gonna leave yeah, it as is. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we're moving it from the list. Oh. oh okay. Gotcha. So, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. That's what I meant. Removing it. Um, the uh, and the so the epoxy paint um, instead of the ceramic. I think everybody agreed we could do something else with it, but I don't know. Did we agree? Are we gonna add it to the alternate? Or are we just gonna take it off? Like, so we're not having this. We're just going to go for the epoxy. Mark's suggestion is that that's what you do. You just go for the epoxy. And just have, take it off, period. And then if you have money later on, because painting and tiling is going to yeah. happen later on in the yeah. project, yeah. you'll okay. have a much better idea. Yeah, this is two items. Right. Yeah. 
You right. could add, you could add it back in as a change. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we're just gonna just yes. So yes. Yeah, so we're yes, minusing I mean. twenty three thousand, and we're not putting it as a. wanted to think a little bit more about the lights, so that's the last two items, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and then, can you talk, we kind of went quickly over the shingled, the shingles, can, can you, Mark and Phil, do you have a recommendation? It's a, it's a huge amount of money compared to these other things. Yeah, so a laminated shingle has a longer warranty on it because they're laminated. Mm -hmm. And so if you put up a, a shingle that's got two laminations on it, it'll give you a you know, 40 or 50 year warranty. And they even sell three layered laminated shingles and they, those are between 50 years and lifetime warranties, whatever that's worth. These are all prorated warranties. And so 40 years into the 50 year warranty, if you were to try to call them up and get some money on it, they're gonna give you if it served you for 80% of the time that it was supposed to, they may offer you something like 20% of the value of the shingle that you paid in today's dollars. Mm -hmm. So um, you get 75 cents. So it's, I mean, it's not great, mm -hmm. right? But they will last longer. Yeah, that's because a, this it's is not the warranty, it's will they last mm -hmm. longer? It's, yeah. They will last longer, based on all the evidence that we have, yeah, than a three-tap shingle. Mm -hmm. um, so there's value in the additional money yeah. that you spend, um, but, that doesn't, that doesn't account for all of the kind of wear and tear that your roof can have. So out in the middle of the field of the, top of the roof shingle, just kind of day in and day out, they will last longer. But if you have water dripping on a regular basis or water running or icicles dripping or you know, things like that, those are the things we're gonna try to prevent with the design of the building. But some areas may take more wear and tear than others and you may have a spot that, that needs to get replaced on a laminated shingle in 20 years, and you may have the same thing on a three tap in 20 years. So you mm -hmm. have to go in and do some replacement. They're not bulletproof. It's the same material. It's just more of it, right. um, but does have an overall more value in that it lasts longer. How long? Multiple does years. Last? With the three tap roof, you're going to get 25 years, is what they say. The 25 or 30 year warranties on mm -hmm. versus the 40 and 50 year. That's what you are for on a year end team. But it'll last another five or seven. It'll last another, yeah, that's, yeah, it'll last another five, seven, ten years. And you're covering up a certain percentage, hopefully, if the numbers are yeah, with the PV or yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. But that won't be the way people are looking at it. the front of the building. Right. We'll be seeing. So how do, how do the PV erase, the mounting of them, how does that affect the replacement of a roof? Like, do you have to, you have to presumably remove the whole? Yes. Array and how much expense does that add to a, a re roofing project? Is anybody know? I mean, I would, what's that? Well, I think a lot. But it, it, it depends on who you talk to, mm -hmm. and uh, the PV systems are getting better. Yeah. Um, but we used to say that the PV systems in an asphalt shingle roof had a similar kind of lifespan. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that assumes that shingle roofs are going to last anywhere from 25 to 45 years. Um, because it just depends on how long you're willing to go before you fix it. Uh, in other words, you may not have a leak. Uh, underneath the shingles, in the tricky spots, there'll, there'll be metal flashing in the valleys, right? Mm -hmm. Under the metal flashing, there's gonna be ice and water shield. And then we'll have ice and water shield around the edges. We'll have it around the ridges. We'll have it on the hips. So all the hard spots are gonna have that under it. And then there's gonna be the insulation and everything that happens underneath that. Uh, there'll be a sheet of roofing felt directly under the roofing. Underneath the rigid insulation, there's gonna be an air vapor barrier. And the air and vapor barrier is a thick, gummy black layer that is actually waterproof. Um, it's really hard for water, even if it leaks through your asphalt shingle roof, to get down onto the floor inside your building, the way we're building it. It, it could leak for five years and you might not even know. Um, so you could leave your asphalt shingle roof up there for quite a while until it starts to become a problem. Um, but when it's time to change your shingle roof, when you remove your PV array, it makes sense to look at replacing your PV right. array. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, because it, 
it, it, is, it assumes the technology is going to be so much greater. I mean, when you look back 25, 30 years ago with the TV arrays people had, yeah, I mean, people didn't put them on their roofs because yeah, it was so funky. Yeah. And they just weren't really efficient. It's so much more efficient now. I mean, you know, 25, 30 years, it'll, you know, it'd be the equivalent, I would think, of like an LED light. And that is the, that is the rule of thumb. You, did you say 25 years? Is 25, 35 years, something like this. It's similar to a, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. In, a, in a a rubber roof has got a similar lifespan, about 25, 30 years. So if you have a 40 year shingle, but a 25 year TV array, and so you're going to be up there removing that, like Phil said. You, you'd be losing 15 years of your roof. Potentially. Yeah. You don't want to go through all that effort, put the PV array, a new and improved PV array back down only to rip the roof off. Well, in ten, years five, later. 10 years later. Yeah. And in fact, they won't, they might not want to put a new PV array on a roof right. that's 15, 20 years old, even if it has a life of 40 yeah. anyway. So, so I guess that's what I'm saying, if that wasn't clear, that even though I think there's probably a little less value that comes with a lower price tag of a three tab shingle, mm -hmm. especially with a PV array. Do you know off the top of your head the mounting detail for the shingle on the shingle roof for the PV array? Is it a series of boots or is it like a grid? It, they'll put down a they'll put down a grid and they'll get mounted with a plate with four bolts in it that they will anchor down into. But is it is it a plate which means a boot through the roof every two feet or is it no it'll be twenty a, feet or something like that? So it's a you know no, with, fewer, this, with this with this type of roof um, we would be using. Um, an attachment foot that basically is like a retrofit, mm -hmm. rather than attaching through to the steel, okay. we would go into the roof. Okay. So every leg would have a plate on it with four bolts on it, legs, and these into the, the rafters or whatever. It's no, it's going to go down into the insulation, just like the roof. Just into really? Yeah, into the sheathing. Is that strong enough to hold the? Yes, plate? because there's so many more fasteners in it. That's what we did in Granby. Granby has sold? <laughs> it hasn't blown off yet either. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically they use a retrofit fastener on that. It's just much more cost effective than trying to waterproof every little yeah, penetration. Right, that's right, yeah. And you know, you, you just put more of them. There's yeah. more of these speed on there. When you have isolated penetrations where you're going through the structure, you have them less often. And you're trying to take all that wind load down in a couple of different spots. This just spreads out the load. And with standing seam. It's a different kind of attachment. Yeah. Kind of it's it's you can clip onto the same thing. Right. Yep. So you okay. never no, go through that. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it so beautiful. Yeah. So, in theory, we are going to be continually fundraising and, you know, continuing to have a sort of a building fund. That's sort of what we talked about in the trustees. <coughs> so, we could go with the least expensive roof right now, put the money towards the solar array. And in 25 years, ideally, we'd have been collecting money. We could maybe do everything in one fell swoop that we'd hope to have, the standing seam roof and the new PDA. So I mean, that's, you know, that, that that sort of fits with the cycle of, the replacement cycle for what you're saying. Well, we kick the can down the road is another way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if we, so, I mean, with the price tag of the roof, the likelihood of us getting the, you know, that roof is pretty slim. So the same, same. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I agree. But yeah, Wait, I mean, when, when you start getting out to that point, mm -hmm. I mean, so what's the most cost-effective really alternative? Yeah, to that's, that's question. exactly. So, just planning to say we will be replacing everything in 25 years, and hopefully we'll have enough money that we'll. Well, it's not going to be us anyway. You know, well, <laughs> no, but <laughs> yeah, kids. Yeah. yeah, although that's been sort of the Hadley mo and paid the price. Yeah, well, I don't really consider this building the Hadley MO at all. I feel like what we've done is like a hundred times better than anything else that has been built in Hadley in any recent future. So yes, you could argue yeah. that the roof might be the Hadley way, but the you know right, on top of a building that is yeah. built to last, it, yeah. I, do, well, I think we not, should, you know, we should be aware of what happened with the public safety complex and that they what, wish yeah, they had put a standing in elementary here. school. Yeah. And repairs and, and the, sun, the Sunderland Elementary School had the same problem. Yeah. Well, because that's there's a lot of flat roofs there. Mm -hmm. But I mean, in this New England, the, the roof is the most important thing. You know, the most important thing other than the foundation. But I think and, that part of the argument here is the PV array. Yeah, right? I know. I mean, because again, the technology is going to force you to replace that roof. 
you might have to replace it anyway. Yeah. So, so I think that's why I can kind of get my head wrapped yeah. around yeah. not doing it. Right, I mean, so that's the same for me. I mean, if we have the money to do the standing seam, that would be great, I'd be arguing for that. But to me, the sort of, there's three roofs we're talking about. The standing seam, which is the, you know, the Cadillac, the most expensive, these architectural shingles, and then this three tab shingles. And I guess I've not really heard a compelling argument to go with the middle cost roof. I've heard compelling arguments to go either way, but this one we can't afford. So well, how much money are we, what's the difference in the money? 65,000 dollars, okay. I mean, if, if you, if you, you know, the three top shingle is a standard shingle, so you're not, you're not, the, the Hadley way, you're not going cheap, yeah. you're just yeah. going standard, yeah. industry standard. If you went with the architectural shingle that you could theorize, that could prevent you from getting the PV, right? How about you know, if, or if the, or, yep. or continuing, if the numbers are good and you get the PV array, it could prevent you or get you uh, not as close as you want to getting the metal roof. You know, so if, it, I don't, I think there's more downside going to that higher end shingle that might need to be replaced in 25, 30 years anyway, anyway that's than, yeah. well, than now. I, I buy that argument where there is a PV. There's not right. gonna be a PV in the front of the building, which is the most visual part of the building. Is there some way you could oh, mix and match? Mix and match? I don't think you'd would not be. Right. I think that would look And the architectural um, shingles are a much nicer look. You have huge roof area, and you're going to have sort of an old school flat yeah. shingle. I think, given the height and the size of the yeah, building, I, see that I don't know that there's going to be a lot of vantage points where you're really going to get yeah, from the ground. Good look at that. It's so high up that the texture, I think you're going to get kind of a model gray. And I don't think that's going to be much, much different. The three tab um, in terms of what you're going to see from the ground. I think you're going to, you'll see a little more. I think you'll see the texture, but I don't think it's going to make a big impact on the on the roof. Um, if you were to put a natural slate roof on, it's very flat and kind of square looking, and that's kind of what a three tab looks like. I, I'm not suggesting a three tab looks like a slate, but what I mean is, is that you know. The fact that it's kind of simple and flat and square, I don't think is necessarily a yeah, drawback. That's, yeah. Yeah. that's why we're using shingles in the first place. You know, we'd be using metal if it wasn't for the historical committee. And no, uh, no, 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 it's the cost. It's a quarter million dollars. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the architectural shingles give you that texture because of the Kind of artificial shadows they put on there with yeah. the different color of granules. So it's but also the thickness. They are thicker. It's, it's, it's a different look. It's, it's definitely, yeah, definitely yeah, a different yeah, they're look. They're, yeah. And I think we should look at it because you need to see the difference. Uh, yeah. it, it will make a difference, I think. Oh, you mean the look of it? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, oh, well, I don't recall what Grady has, to tell you the truth. Uh, they probably have that. I remember seeing it. I remember being not impressed with the roof. Um, maybe it looked kind of ordinary. I don't know. I don't even know who did that. Are there any comments from municipal building committee? Well, well we would have preferred the standing same, yeah. but I, I gotta yeah. tell you, the only thing, the other thing to consider is the fact that in 25 years, the cost of that metal roof is gonna be probably out of our reach as well. So, you know, now it's, we know what it is, but it's not getting any cheaper. And it will last a lot longer. It'll be two or three roof changes Right. Of yeah, age, yeah. so we're not doing it for another yeah. 75 so, years, so or close to a hundred, where the other is about every 30. So that's what we're also looking at. Yeah, yeah solar is going to change. I mean, but a good panel nowadays will probably go 30 years. So, what, what panel? 30 years, solar panel. Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah, they'll just diminish in yeah. time right, right, exactly. how efficient they are, but they'll still be good. Yeah. But the, but the fact is, though, that no matter how good or bad they are now, if you're going to replace the roof in 25 or 30 years, you're replacing the solar panels, too. It would make, because it would be more efficient. Well, we need at least a roof that will yeah. be comparable with panels. So we yeah. probably need to know how long those panels are going to last. So now we're looking at the mid-grade. So. Well, you know, another argument on this is one of our two solar arrays we lease. Rather than what? putting, we lease oh. one of our arrays from Tesla. So rather than sinking a lot of our money into it, we actually lease the system from them, and it saved thousands. 
Um, the other array we bought outright right at the start. But well, the only difference with that is you're not getting the full amount to you. Right. You're yeah. you're right. getting percentage off, so you're right. not really getting much from that. You're not getting the full benefit of owning it. So yeah. it's hard to tell in the pictures with Grandview Library. We what's have a the, steep what's roof, the, what's so the we will see. What's the reason why we can't do a mix and match? It just would look funny, or would be impossible to do it. It's not impossible to do. It's just going to look funny, I think. It's going to look funny with the photoelectric thing up there, too. Isn't it? <laughs> People will be looking at that, not the ask. I, I think it looks good. <laughs> yeah. I always think those look good. I love the way mine looks. Yeah. Looks better than the shingles underneath. What the heck was the Grammy picture? So what I heard you saying, Dave, is the Municipal Building Committee would say, go for the standing seat. That would have been our first choice right. with all the buildings, because that's what yeah. we right. were doing. Right. So. Right. But for us, it would yeah. be giving up some, you know, some yeah. significant something in order to get that. Yeah. Yeah. But I just think down the road, it's also going to make it harder to, to reach, you know, depending on what's going on in town in those 30 years from now. You know, are there other buildings that we're right. working on? Or is yeah, everything right. up to date? Or, well, I mean, the, the, the goal of the trustees is to have a growing building fund so that we mm -hmm. always have money yeah, I mean, to maintain understand our building. Yeah. Right. Right. Yep. So not just the basic stuff that we have a line item in the town, but these major upgrades. Right. That's the that's the sort of vision, whether this will come to pass or not. Right. You know, we're doing good with fundraising for this effort, but who knows, maybe it'll peter out once we have the building. Who knows? But, but another, to me, another argument for putting in the mid-grade one, the architectural shingles, is... Um, you know, if, assuming it lasts another 10 or 15 years beyond the, the three tab, um, the worst that could happen is that it outlives the solar, the, the solar yeah. system, okay? All right, so then we have to, we, hey, we start paying electrical bills again, you know, and, uh, we don't get the benefit of the PV, um, um, and maybe we fundraise for that. that. That would be the reason to fundraise. It would be a lot easier to fundraise for something sexy like a photo of thing that net zero and all that stuff as opposed to a roof. I don't know, I think a standing seam roof is pretty sexy. Oh, a standing seam, yeah. <laughs> maybe we could fundraise for that together yeah. then, but we, we'd have more time if it didn't pan out or if, you know, the town is sinking money into a public safety and a, uh, you know, God knows what, we've got plenty of needs that we just limp along for another 15 years. And the other thing too is the fact that, what is it, maybe three quarters of the roof is not solar panel. Right. So it's that will right. be changed whenever it needs to get changed. Right. Yeah. You can just right. do right under the panels if you have to. There you go. So we can do whatever we want with the rest of the roof. Yeah. It does well, look like, it looks like Grandview Mass has architectural shingles. Well, you got a picture of it? Yeah. With the three tab? Yeah. Is it laminated? <laughs> so wait, what are we looking at? Which there's one is a, that? There's a three tab. Um, the first one's a three tab. That's the one. And then the yeah, second one, the kind of modeled mm -hmm. and coloring is the architectural. And it's the texture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's this? Okay. Architectural. Whoops. Well, you can probably help that. Is. <laughs> to me, it comes down to no so much. This is going to be a lot flatter than this. Is there any indication yeah. in terms of yeah. what yeah. is coming down the road? Well, it's going to be the steep. You're going to see apparatus yeah. rather than having to go flat. Uh, uh, they've already. Yeah. Is it wasn't it Tesla that did that? Where they have yeah. Yeah. Does that seem like something that you know ultimately we're moving towards, or is that a given? That makes the most sense to me. Um, I can't imagine why somebody wouldn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it does mean that, that roofers need to be electricians to a certain extent, right? Mm -hmm. And so it may take a little longer for that to get into the public bid realm. Um, but if you're talking about 25, 30 years from now, it could be, my guess is that if, if it's going in that direction, it will be easy enough to for anybody to do. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be some way for them to be modular, and then they also have to connect to one. 
then how that really happens, I don't really know. But I can imagine somebody you know, just painting a metallic tape across the back of them. You just yeah, have to kind of line them up. Like mm -hmm. yeah. and, and maybe it'll be great. Mm -hmm. um, that is certainly what I hear people talking about. Okay. What, how real that is, I don't know. So remind us, what is our limit on what we can spend on the building? Because I know there are other funds for furnishing and things like that, but what, you know, we see numbers ranging from 5.3 million to 5.7, 5.9. What can we spend? I, uh, I, haven't, um, I haven't calculated what your overall budget is and, and, and how much portion of that your building takes up. I, I don't know the answer to that. But overall, we had enough between our projected fundraising, which is 300000 how much we have from the town and how much we have for the rent, we have $7.9 million. Right. So, I mean, whether or not this, our estimate on furnishings, I mean, we basically, you know, not counting the, the escalation, we were just, that was how much it costs. So, um, yeah. you know, I don't know if this, whatever it was, 5.3, and then, you know, 7.2 minus 5.3 is adequate for furnishings, or I, I don't know. So, so, so the trade-off is that if we if we actually did all this stuff without taking anything off, and the bids came in closer to the bad news here, it's not that we couldn't afford to build the building, so we wouldn't be able to put anything in. We'll be grand, right. exactly. Yeah, we'll be grand. <laughs> yeah. 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 And they eventually did get their stuff in there. Yeah, and the town considered the Granby Library a huge success. Yeah. I mean, on day one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that's a devil's bargain, but it's, you know, it's, 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 it's got to be into our thinking that, you know, and I don't think it's going to be a zero sum thing where you either get a nice building with no furnishings right. or you get uh, fewer. A few, yeah. yeah. Fewer. It'll be fewer. Yeah. And some things will stretch out, or we might have to make do with this. Well, stuff. What about, so, what about the, there are certain numbers that are in the, in the project budget that you know, may or may not apply, but you know, things like, I can't remember the exact numbers, but I want, the number that's in my head is like $50,000 for movers. We're probably not going to need $50,000 in movers. Are there numbers there that we can look at to say, sure. Well, there's the know, 230 it, value of the property. Yes, so, yeah. that, I mean, going to the, the project, the overall project budget that you I'll have presented to the Board of Library Commissioners gives you an overall <laughs> number, right? But there are some <laughs> things like the value of property <laughs> that you can, that aren't real costs, not real. and those can be zeroed out. They don't need to go into your working from that budget. Um, well, and there's some things, there are numbers that you know, you know how much my fees are, you, you know how much Mark's fees are, pretty soon we'll know how much the building costs, and that will, that will be a big chunk of what your project budget is. You'll be able to reallocate these numbers, and then you, could, you will still maintain, I would imagine, allowances in certain line items until you get a hard number. Mm -hmm. So you may decide that you want to take, if there's $50,000 in there for moving, you may decide that, well, that really, you know, we think we could probably carry something like 30. And then you could reallocate that 20 to something else. And it could be the building or it could be well, the furnishings. Well, well yeah. but and then when, we, the timing was, we can't, re if we had something like that in hand, it would be too late to reallocate it back to the roof or to, to uh, right. right? That's going to be, yes. those decisions are made now. Right. So, right. so those, like to reallocate I'm just was, wondering if there are some of those numbers that we could, you know, examine to say, okay, maybe that $50,000 is not a realistic number. Maybe, you know, I mean, when we think about what's actually in here that needs to be moved, it's not that much. And we have, you know, we have a DPW department that has been willing to help move departments from here to there. Maybe that's not really something that we need to, I mean, I'm just saying that, that as an example, it could be like five or sure. ten other items that, that we could look at, I mean, in terms of like what the technology is that's coming into the building, what do we actually need and what do we think that would cost. I'm, I'm just wondering if that's a, that, that's a way to look at this so that we don't have to throw out the metal roof or we don't have to throw out you know, some of these features. Uh, you, you certainly could do that. And the 230 is the only thing that I know offhand without, you know, saying, oh, well, we already have a lot of computers. We, you know, we can start out with just the ones we have and then add them. You know, so those are the two sort of you may also have to kick in a little bit to pay for temporary facilities a little bit longer. So that's, yeah, that's already. That was originally in the yeah. budget, budget, right? So yeah, that's true. To, right. Yeah. You'd have to put something in that line on it. Yeah, because that's already that's been big, negotiated. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. you certainly could do that. Um, I just, I'm not privy to all those numbers. Mm -hmm. I haven't been maintaining that. Sure. 
guess the bottom line for me is that is, is if you make a decision now to leave something out, completely leave it out, not just put it as an alternate, um, that will regret it uh, when we see the bids, number one, or we'll just regret it in general, but we can skimp on something else and, and have something that's really important. Yes, I but would agree. Without having this kind of feedback in, in yeah. final form from this person that we decided to get additional information from, I, I apologize. I can't really advise yeah. you succinctly. I, I guess there's some things, there's a couple of things I'd say. I would take a chance and put, leave it in there. And if we can't afford computers, so be it. You know, it's that important. And the trim is one of them. The nice kind of, good kind of trim. Uh, and I'm, I'm wavering on the roof, I guess. But the trim, I think, is to your point that is one of those things that if, if you don't put it in, yeah. it's never going to go. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Versus right. the tile in the yeah. bathroom, yeah. you could argue. You can always put we want the tile, tile and we can't afford yeah. the tile, exactly. but we can do yeah. the right. tile later. Right. 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 Everyone's had to live yeah. through a bathroom renovation. Yeah. You can put tile yeah. on your, it's not that right. destructive. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, it's not right. like yeah. taking right. down shelves and, you know, completely in the center of, of the public space. Exactly. putting well, Especially up the way your toilets are designed, you could close down one and leave the other floor down and just. Right. Yeah. Sure. And didn't you propose at one point possibly build, uh, bidding the solar separately? Yes. Because I know one thing that Karen says to this, and we only speak occasionally, but she knows that the rule of thumb, this is Karen over at PB Squared, is like $4 per, um, it would be watt, so it would be closer to 100000 she believes, rather than 170 when it actually comes to it. That could be a significant chunk yeah, that sure. gets us somewhere yeah. else. Um, but Alan, I, I do agree to your point, and um, the roof is just so important in New England. It, it just matters, and if there's something that we can do that instead of struggling at town meeting every 30 years, trying to replace something that wasn't as good as it could have been. This so are you arguing chance. for the I'm arguing for, for I always been an advocate of the metal roof because I see you know I see what people use on their barns around here so they don't have to deal with that over and over yeah and over. I mean I think we're all in agreement that we'd love to have the metal roof I don't think anyone mm -hmm. thinks it's not but I just yeah. I just don't see the 250 some thousand dollars coming off of anywhere else so um, well, we still have the option of putting it in, as, and I think that's what we're doing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think everyone thinks yes for that. Yeah. I, mean, I think we should wait for the, the final numbers from Phil, hopefully mm -hmm. to verify that, that first yeah. estimate, yeah. and then we prioritize, we revisit the, the uh, prioritization of the alternates. I mean, we'd still, even with this metal rule, even though the town meeting proves it, I think we'd still have to go back to the planning board if we wanted to do it anyway, and there's always an unknown there, I guess. Right? Does I think it would be fine. It's been passed yeah. that time. Yeah. 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 Historical yeah. commission, but that should no, be fine. No, no, yeah. It's a bylaw. Yeah. It's, it's bylaw. a bylaw. Yeah. 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 So, so I don't say it anymore. I think you could, you could probably send them in. Yeah. Right. I think exactly. so. I mean, I think, I think they'd probably they want to see you. Maybe planning an orange metal roof? Or right. Right. Johnson's calling the market with a town of color. Town of color. Yeah. So what and you're saying, Mark, is just wait on this, since we're waiting on the lighting, yeah, anyway, a lot of this is, is truly dependent on okay. what well, it's good that we have a discussion yeah. to kind of, uh, kind of solidify of around what our, the important yeah. stuff is right. when, when push comes to shove. Right. And that might be, hopefully hopefully the bids come in, because right now yeah. your, your, st your timing is, is great. It's still, the numbers the on the, the street are still very aggressive. Yeah. Um, and hopefully we can... Um, realize some savings because of that um, but when the numbers come out when the final big numbers come out then you're going to have that discussion Again. can you take alternate four and sacrifice computers or do we or something like that or do we uh, sacrifice you know we need computers and not take alternate four or whatever it might be yep. right but we have a while because all of the alternates will be they have to provide us a bid on each one of them yeah. whether or not we'll use them right. and then we have a further discussion which of these are we going to take right but, but to Mark's yeah. earlier point about we don't want to have 17 alternatives. Right. No, it's it's right. Yeah. the bidding. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Can we walk away from today's meeting, though, adjusting the order of the alternates? Can we come to some kind of conclusion of dropping down the sta uh, standing scene roof? I, I think one spot. I'd, still, I'd still wait 
I don't think anything's gained by doing it now because if the numbers come in, from the final numbers from Phil, that we might end up change. Okay. Okay. All right. And what, Jack, what is, what Jack, is, do we know if there's a difference in the type of roof for installing the PV systems, if there's a cost mm -hmm. difference or anything like that? Would that make a If a it's a significant savings? Yeah. Um, and we I should find that out. We Just should find that out. Whether it's cheaper help. to do it yeah. on a standing seam Correct. as opposed to an asphalt? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus, we're not going to have all these holes in the roof in the future. Right. You know, yes. that, right. Oh, yeah. Together. Yeah, but that's the thing. It may, yeah. it may be easier for them to install it. I mean, when I even put it Probably. on my roof, that yeah. the, whole, yeah. the whole time was put, putting in the holes. And right. yeah. That's what took yeah. all the time. Yeah. Putting in the panels for 15 and now, seconds. You know, yeah. the mounting system they're talking about yeah. is not standard. That happens every day. They're used yeah. to doing yeah. one bolt each, you know, every other rafter, yeah. and they just run the rack. So, yeah. you know, this is a little more, you know, sorry, right. Oh, uh, our system yeah. Yeah. is a little right. bit more that's right. Yeah. yeah. And that's the standing seam might be a hell of a lot easier. Yeah. But I haven't done it. Okay, I can investigate that. Yeah, so I don't know if it's going to be a significant them. cost, yeah. but well, not compared to 167. Yeah, and certainly it'll help protect the roof. 20. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Every little bit helps. Yeah. I mean, it's late. It's, it's late. you're talking yeah. about labor. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And that's the most expensive. 50 bucks an hour is that what we're paying? For bailing wage. Yeah. You might want to get a job. ability to sort of, once you get the bids back on the alternates, to say, I will take one of number one, I will take half of number three, or some, no? You have to take them in order. You have to you take, have them, to take yeah. them in order. Oh, take, we have to order them? Yeah, that's yeah. Right. You have to yeah. take them in order. Oh, okay, all right. So Back in the day, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and we got a few jobs this way where they'd say, we'll take, you know, because the base bidder could lose an alternate, on one, the base bidder could become uh, second bidder, yeah, yeah. or by alternate four, yeah. you could introduce another. Yeah. Bidder. yeah. Um, so way back in the day, I, I, we we were awarded projects where they took alternates one, five, and six, and that made us where we started off second bidder, we ended up or third bidder, we ended up to be low bidder, and they intentionally did that, you know, just to make and not you can't do that anymore. You have okay. to take them in order uh, to know. prevent game okay. playing like yeah. that. Yeah. Then how does that work if a metal roof is a high priority, but the conversation sounds to me as though that might get moved down the list, because that's going to be... Yeah. Where's I, well, that's the issue. It's, it's, it's a high priority for everyone, so we put it at the top of the list. But now the discussion is, trim. if it prevents, for instance, the wood trim from going up, yeah. and we know that if the wood trim doesn't go up now, it will never go up. Mm -hmm. um, and we're not going to get to the wood trim if we don't get through the metal roof. Yeah. Um, right. Then that might make you yeah. revisit the, the priority order. of right. the right. Because right now we could get the PV, which we have to get the PV. Yeah. I mean, it's part of our plan, yeah. so right. that has yeah. to be in the top. But we could get the PV and the stained wood for less than just the, the right. roof, even though everyone yeah. agrees yeah. the roof would be fantastic. Right. But if we put the roof on the top and we only have two hundred fifty thousand dollars, we get nothing. We get nothing because we there. right. And, and, but Unless you can, we want to give up some furnishings or you something. Don't, you don't have to get the PV. I mean, you can we you can prep the building yeah. to receive PV and and then fundraise for PV, um, and in lieu of getting the PV, you get the roof, you get the trim, you get the shrubs, or and all that. Um, it, it, it's a tough it's a tough call because it's like feel like I feel like I'm playing the horses or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so Karen actually sent an email just a little while ago that says. As you'll see, this comes in a bit under a hundred thousand for solar. For what? For, for the, looking at the size of our the system. Array. Oh, for the array. So rather than I think we have a price down of one sixty, mm -hmm. plus the seventeen thousand for yep. lightning protection. So again, that might be. It's a more to say. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably some markups on there too, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's that? Probably some markups on there too, because it's going to be the, the electrical bid. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the electrician's right. going to hire somebody to do it. And yeah. And that's why you have on the second page the. If you bid it, it, it we were suggesting that one of the possibilities, this last, last group, I don't go over this, but this last group is, I mean, these are things that we wouldn't necessarily recommend. Mm -hmm. But this is how far you have to go yeah. in order to start getting yeah. some real money out. And right. they, they're, they're not really, but they're, so, they're sort of in all order of the kind of, from 
less oh, yeah, like the crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, well, the last one is reduce the size of the building. <laughs> you can get a lot of money out if you reduce the size of the building, but you may lose your grant. Um, so the first one is carpeting. This is part of the furnishing. It's just kicking the can. It's just kicking right. right. Yeah. It's just deferring it. So you may be able to prevent a little bit of an overhead markup on that, but it's not a lot of dough. And you're still going to have to put it down anyway, and then you're going to have to coordinate it with your floor outlets and everything, and it's just not a great way to do it. Maybe an easier one maybe to do would be to illuminate a top coat uh, of one of the paint coats inside there, right? You can paint the whole inside of the building plus for a primer and two coats of paint. You could do a primer and one coat of paint. Um, and as long as you didn't have any real dark colors, you'd probably be okay. Um, yeah. But these are the kind of things... That are, these are the only things. This is how are, desperate you all were. This is, this is, <laughs> 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 you know, like that idea sticks, light out. you know, and then you're right down because you don't have any hands. Trim here. Well, what, what about the, the bidding of the PV and, and, uh, as a separate bid? Does that remove it from being uh, the top alternative? Well, you you take it out of this project and you make it its, its own thing. So you did it separately. We did it in Irving. Did it work? Well, we haven't bid we haven't bid it yet. <laughs> and and, and that's a, but, but then they have to have the money for it. But we uh, yeah, but we also bid it separately in in Granby. We built the Granby building and when they were about eighty percent done, um, we opened up the bids for the P V and then they put the P V and the lightning protection on the roof of that building after the roof was on. So we can separate bids easily come back and fundraise for for a yeah. PV array, yeah, and that, that two I, years. I don't want us. I don't. I don't want us to be in a position of maybe not getting that. Well, I would be breaking faith with the town. I would I suggest. What I'm suggesting here is that you bid it during the construction phase. Right. While you're building the building, you bid it, and then before you move in, it's done. Mm -hmm. But it just allows you a little bit more flexibility. It allows yeah. you to pull it out of the bidding and bid it separately, and maybe avoid some markups. Well, well you know, it gives us a year, an extra year to fundraise around that item between now and then. Does it, I mean, it's a year, right? Not really a year, yeah. but not, not almost, maybe eight months. Um, like that. Does it give us more flexibility in the way the way we're dealing with the alternates? In other words, we it would take it would, would take part of the alternate. Right. It would be gone. We, right, so it we'd be, be able to let's say our first one then is the stained wood, and the second one is the standing seating right. roof, without the hundred sixty thousand dollar item for the PV, that, that becomes more possible. But we can't say that we don't have to spend that hundred dollars. Right, it's still going to have right, to be spent. Right, but maybe instead of a hundred and But we're not bound by the bid, the original bid thing. We're not straightjacketed by that bid. Right, so instead of a hundred and sixty or seventy yeah. thousand with the, with the lightning protection, instead of having that argument, do we give up the computers or take health in the yeah. two, and you're, instead, instead of computers, you're talking about do we give up PV, but instead of a hundred and seventy thousand dollar system, it might be a hundred and right. Okay. forty five thousand. So, so, so where we might end up is we let's say we get it. It's not it's not an alternate. It's a separate bid thing. We, we go with the same wood and the same scene, Let's say, and uh, and it's all within the bid stuff. And then we go out and bid the PV, and it's like, oops, we don't have that money uh, unless we don't have computers. Then that that's then we have that choice. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then we can have that conversation. We're gonna take the computer money and the chair money and the whatever, <laughs> the coffee machine right. money, and put and the it toilet in the paper. The paper. Toilet paper. Yeah, all that free electricity and nothing yeah. to plug right. in. Exactly. <laughs> That's fine. I think. Bring your own. Yeah. As, as long as we as long as we don't <clears throat> run the risk of somehow having the PV, poof. You know that we have some. It's not just fundraising. That's that's what we want to do. But if we can't fundraise, then we take the money out of our furnishings thing and put it in there. That's kind of the commitment we have to make. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. You know, we're not, we're not having you know, having fewer alternatives. And, you know, that might that might be the way to go. Well, all things that it seems as if we need to just bring back next time when we see the actual price. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, that's yeah. kind of what I'm hearing from yeah. you guys mm -hmm. is that we've gone as far as we can go. Yep. Okay. This is like the ending to the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> on and that's on right, that's and on. Right. Is this the end though? Is it not the scene? Yeah, right. <laughs> so, Phil, uh, walk the group through, say for the sake of argument, we meet in two weeks, we've got a number, 
we prioritize the alternates and they were good to go. Yes. Yeah. System to and then each take us from that point to the right. day. So a couple of weeks after we meet the next time, if all goes well, we will have completed the documents and we will send them to the to the printer, the the online purveyor. I'm assuming it's gonna go online. That's pretty much what everybody does now. We'll send those off. Um, an advertisement will go into the central register. We'll send you a copy of that along with Mark for the local paper, and then you can post one at the town hall. We have a meeting before that happens, right? Can we have to bless it all in a couple of, in a couple of weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. We'll have a um, That's what he's we're, we're saying go ahead and bid. Basically, is that what we're going to tell you? I would typically not present you with a hundred percent ready to bid set of documents and ask you to take a look at it before I go to bid. Yeah. Typically not do no, that, that doesn't make sense. Ninety percent? Um, no. 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 Okay. <laughs> no. You, I, you, you hired us to take care of this yeah. for you, and, yeah. we're, and, we're, okay. and we're gonna we're gonna do that now. Yeah, in during David has something for the he, he has the front end. Yeah. That's all so, the so just you know, David's are, already working with oh. the front end of the bid document. All the contracts so that, that's already just with the contract, so it's ready to go. Right. Okay. And then the so, the right. details need to be added. So yeah. it's like this train is going to be speeding up. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then once it goes out to bid, yeah. we typically, we're going to suggest three weeks before the filed sub bids are come in, mm -hmm. and then another two weeks after that, so a total of five weeks for the bid period. Yeah. And then during that period, I would certainly take advantage of that period to take a look at the documents because they will be available to you and all bidders at the same time. The state law says that anybody who asks a question that isn't readily shown answerable with the documents we need to respond in writing within an addendum and so that essentially means I will have to send out an addendum during the bid phase to all of the bidders and that will you know, all the information that's on that addendum will be included in the contract documents and they will base their bids on that information so everybody will have to acknowledge that they've received each of the addenda and that it's included in their bid when they put it in their bid day so I would take advantage of that time take a look through if there's anything you find that you think we need to correct, let us know. It's a lot easier to do it during an addendum phase than with a change order later. And we can send out an addendum and correct it. Um, but this is going to happen after we decide on the alternatives, right? Yes, because yes. that needs we'll to be the documents. We'll do that in two weeks. Two weeks, two weeks okay. right. So in May, we could be accepting bids. Mm -hmm. That would be the plan. So you'll say basically, mm -hmm. like, everything should be yeah, in June, by like that, yeah. the end of May, May 21st. So I'm just sort of leaking this right. out as you so, so yeah, yeah okay. um, so, oh, I can tell you the date that I'm thinking of is that it would be available to bidders and it would come out on the central register on April Wednesday April 24th that's kind oh, of okay. the date I've been working mm -hmm. okay. okay and so if you assume that yep. then one two three weeks after that is the 15th of May mm -hmm. and two weeks after that okay. is the 29th April 24th, those 24th. dates that I'm suggesting Okay. And if everything goes well, that's, that's the way it will go. Mm -hmm. Now, so the contractors will also ask, all the bidders will ask questions during the addenda, the addenda phase, and we'll, some of them will be on there, and we can clarify it. Um, and then occasionally something will come up, and we'll need to send out an addendum that's a little bit larger or encompasses more of something. Um, and if that happens, and if it comes up kind of at the last minute, and we say, oh, we, you know, we really need to respond to this, one of the things that we may suggest is that change the bid dates by then. Um, it occasionally happens, mm -hmm. and so you can say, as opposed to the, the, the bid dates being this, they've been moved to this, so you have enough time to incorporate this change because it's significant. Uh, and we will occasionally do that before we try to avoid. How about the demolition uh, part of the that's, bid? That's part, part of it. That's part of the bid. And, and um, are we gonna have in there saving the bricks, saving the plaque? Yes. That kind of stuff yep. that we talked about before? So the earliest of them, I would start with each one. Yeah. So we have the so, but uh, we have to review the all the bids. It's going to take a while. July. Right. We yeah right because we have to review the bids, get it, make sure the select board approves, you know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So that could take. Yeah, we'll check the decan reports. They will have to put together their bonds and so forth. Mm -hmm. We'll have to write the contract. Yeah. Um, so we we'll have to check their references. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is, is so the demolition it's usually a bid a separate thing? No. I mean, a separate contractor could bid on that? Potentially. A yeah. demolition subcontractor? I would imagine that. Oh, be a subcontractor. Okay. Right. Yeah. It would be a sub. Okay. And did we find anything with the hazardous waste, the asbestos, that's going to 
give us pause about how long it's going to take and how expensive it's going to be? You know? um, I don't have anything from the asbestos folks that say that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a considerable amount of work, but I, I don't think they found anything that is. Yeah. Somebody told me that they might have to spend three to four weeks just getting the stuff out of the building before they actually knock it down. Yeah, that sounds about right. I just wanted to um, say one little thing about this stained wood and um, uh, the trim. That's the um, the topic I care most about, and that's why I came to this meeting. Um, we haven't really talked about it, um, but you know, I feel as Alan does that it's, it's super um, important. But I wanted to also say that I don't think it's necessary in the children's room. Like, I don't know if that makes a difference, but the part that I think that's really important is in the main area, the atrium when you walk in. But I, I don't, I could care less about it in the children's room. I think you could paint everything in there. Um, I just don't think it, it's gonna look worse or anything. You know, we could do some fun stuff with colors Kids don't aren't going to care. It's not going to matter at all. But so I don't know if that will save a, a little bit of money. But um, you know, it's something to consider that we don't need to do that throughout the entire building. Sure, sure. I, get it. Um, I don't know that it makes a big difference given the size right, of it relative not, to everything else. But. I'm just saying. So back to the calendar. So what you're saying, if I'm sort of scoping this out and what is the what is the impact on what we're doing it looks like we need to meet in two weeks so say april 9th mm -hmm. um what's wrong with april 9th oh, okay. election it's what it's the election well, i guess we can still oh that's election that's all right that was, we can still meet yeah. it's vote early that's all oh we have a trustee yeah. meeting that day i'm gonna be out yeah, that's right <laughs> a couple of us will be out there holding signs so. actually we, and we have a trustee <laughs> meeting that night too so we sat on top of it last time that might not be as welcome. So maybe we could find a different day that week. But anyway, so that sometime that week, you, what you're saying is we'll be ready to go. We should look at this. Yes. Okay. So, so we'll take a look at that week. And then after that, it looks like for a while, there's not going to be much for us to do because you are going to be doing all the work. Right. Yeah. So, <coughs> so we. It's not backing. So, so, I mean, we can, you know, we can focus our efforts elsewhere, you know, take a break, look, you know, put our shoulders to fundraising, whatever, looking through the month of May, really. So then for the rest of April and May, looks like the ball is largely in your court. Mm -hmm. You know, so maybe we'd have one check-in meeting um, just so we can say, oh, what's, you know, what's happening so far. So we might want to have one check-in meeting where we might not need you, Phil, to come all the way out here, correct? Um, and then what, so if you are envisioning that May 29th, everything will be in, so what is, the, so I know what the process, what, you know, we did when we were looking at other, you know, bids that came in, but these are going to be sizable. Mm -hmm. um, so what is the process that, that you know, how, how long are we going to have, or is this really, there's nothing to do because we're just going to have to go with the lowest bidder. You, you, you don't have to go with the lowest bidder if there's a, if there's compelling, a, if there's a compelling reason right, not to, right. right? But yeah. you, I mean, it's, you typically are going to yeah. end up with a low bid. Yeah. Um, and so we'll need a couple of days to review their references. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully we'll we will have heard of them before mm -hmm. and know a little bit of something about them. I mean, it's, it ends up being the same folks that bid on these things. Yeah. Even though we're not, and my mm -hmm. guess is that we'll know the, yeah. we'll know the sums. Well, right. Won't our big, big task be to decide whether we go with an alternative or not? That, yeah. We yeah. This? Um, and so we just want to make sure, we're checking through the bids, we just want to make sure that there isn't a bid that you need to eliminate for mm -hmm. some reason oh. so mm -hmm. that you wouldn't be able to consider it, right? And then we'll come up with a tabulation of everything. And then, so there'll be a running tally. So you'll you'll be able to see what everybody's number is plus alternate one, mm -hmm. everybody's number plus alternate mm -hmm. two, so, and and then if the if the bid if the low bid order changes, yeah. um, that will that yeah. will show on that. And that's what the guys well. do. We'll do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, so we were talking maybe the second week of June, the week of June tenth. Uh, I think we want to meet 
was pretty close after the bid opening. Don't oh, you okay. think? So 529, I assume, I don't know, Memorial Day, is that <coughs> that weekend, I guess? Y yeah. Probably. Yeah, the 27th is Memorial Day. So if the bids oh, are due the, the 29th, oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Oh, so that's fine. Yeah, so if the bids are the 29th, it won't, it'll take a couple days to do the tabulation, that's it. So, you're so we should meet the following week. Yeah. There's no okay. reason, there's yeah. no reason yeah. to put yeah. that on. Yeah. 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 So you know, four people Monday signed Monday in the, the town. Third or Tuesday the fourth. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so I can I'm gonna just look for some times okay. for us to yeah. have these meetings. Um, I know I realize they're kind of far out and everyone's schedule might still be shifting, but. Um, so if we met that June fourth or whatever yeah. Monday is, the, then there'd be a recommendation. Yep. Phil and I we've gone through the bids, done the tabulation, make a recommendation pending. You know, uh, no, we need to do our due diligence and review references and do all that sort of thing. Oh, but you're doing based that on after. based okay. on the numbers, yeah. and here's who would recommend, and then you could have the discussion about which alternates mm -hmm. to choose and so forth. And while you're doing that, we're we're trying to verify the validity of the low bidder. Mm -hmm. um, and assuming nothing changes, then you have we have direction, and we bring that forward to the select board. Mm -hmm. So then we could go to the select board as early as the twelfth what you're suggesting. When do you make decisions about the nitty gritty of like, okay, we want this to be uh, walnut versus cherry stain or, you know, the carpet should be gray or brown. Oh, during, during or during construction. During construction, we, yeah. can, we don't yeah. do that before no. we did. Okay. Because we won't know the brand name or the model number of anything that they are proposing. Okay, but I mean, when, if, if we say, we want a brown carpet instead of a gray carpet, then the contractors and the bidders are going to say, well, we didn't bid on that. Um, well, occasionally things like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, we, what, we, what, we'll have them, what we'll specify is um, you know, three different carpets that are similar or an equal and in this in So this as long as we say range. we want something that's equal, we should right. be able to give it yes. to us. And when yep. it comes to aesthetics, they're usually pretty flexible. Yeah. I mean, every now and then I've had to push back on a carpet and, and said, I can't find anything in this one that you've given me that, that, that works. Okay. And we'll that's, get another one. Okay, that's great. So have we decided on what that magical number is for what can be spent on the building? 7.9. No. Well, we have 7.9. You have 7.9 for the whole quit. project. Yeah. In theory, if, our, if we meet our fundraising goal, which we don't have any reason to believe that we will not. Well, well, the only person who could, the only entity I think that could say, well, you can't spend more than 5.9 on the building is MDLC, but they're not going to do that, right? They're not going to say, you know, within the 7.9, it has to be so much on the building as opposed to the furnishings. Yeah. Nobody's going to tell us that. No. 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 It's us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you're I, asking how much total money do we have to work with? Right. On the building. Right. I was involved yeah. with uh, when we renovated at Great Falls mm -hmm. Middle School and did that project. It was a 15%, I think, for furnishing mm -hmm. and all of that. There was sort of a standard figure. Right. We also had the contingency. Number right. Yeah. Too. Right. right. So can you talk a little bit about how the process for the furnishings itself? I mean, I know that happens during construction that we, you know, we select those things. But in terms of the, is that a separate bid process um, or is it a separate, like, all the cart like you know, it's one thing from here, and one's a whole separate thing that'll be orchestrated through Phil's office. Okay. Uh, while while construction's going, and you're meeting weekly, doing that, at some point there'll be a, a FF and E subcommittee, mm -hmm. and it'll be a whole side conversation that's happening concurrently with construction, and you'd meet and discuss everything from chairs to tables to computers to everything. But in general, the, does it end up going through? I mean, through like one provider of furnishing, or does it go through multiple? No, like if you, we, like we're going we, to this thing tomorrow, we're going to see like a, a, yeah, like yeah. a thousand different pieces. No, it'll of go furniture. through multiple, but, so but we, it'll we, be we recommendations. Typically doing, doing something like with steel shelving, for example, we would mm -hmm. typically say you just buy it off the state bid list. You can get a couple of numbers from a couple of different manufacturers and see which one works the best for you. The colors are all similar mm -hmm. and it's all similar material. Right. Um, there are some part. There are some furnishing types that you can get off of the state bid list, office furnishings and yeah. stuff like that, pretty easy. Mm -hmm. um, the rest of the stuff we would probably recommend bidding. Um, yeah. And some of the people that bid maybe also be on the bid list. 
um, and then there's a little bit more flexibility with things like furnishings. Mm -hmm. You know, if you if you bid the thing with thirty two soft chairs, mm -hmm. you know, for a meeting in the building, and yeah. then you add everything up and you find that you know you're over by three grand, you could change it to thirty soft chairs, mm -hmm. um, and that's no big deal. Whereas you couldn't really do that before you sign a contract. In other words, you say this is what we want to do. You just need to make it clear when you're bidding yeah. that you're looking for a unit price and then a total, yeah. and you reserve the right to take a little Remove bit less. Some of them. So you pull yeah. some of the things out that you don't need. You make some changes. You add a couple more of these, mm -hmm. and you, and you come up with a number that works for you once you've opened up your bid numbers. Okay. You just work out with them when the deliveries are going to be, mm -hmm. and then. We just need to make sure that the contractor is ready because there's some things that furnishings people like to have done first before yeah. you know they want they want the yeah. doors in they want the sidewalks sure. in so that they can wheel stuff in the front door right. you know yeah um, there's a couple things they're, they're always looking for you don't have to worry about an elevator which is yeah. good yeah because a lot of them won't deliver without an elevator um, but basically what will happen is is that we'll start talking about it when you get in three or four five months into construction because you're kind of working backwards on the lead times for the furnishings, how long they're going to take, and then how long it's going to take to kind of do the design work, and then the bidding is not nearly as long as it is for this okay. three, two or three weeks. Do you find that the lead times for a lot of the furnishings are, are very long, or is this a lot of off-the-shelf no, items or a mix? Um, it's a lot of the stuff is off the shelf, and then what we would typically do is we're going to have some custom or semi-custom items where we're taking a piece of furniture that's kind of standard and maybe changing something to make it work better with what you're doing. It's almost like when you buy a couch and you pick the upholstery and it's like yeah. eight weeks right. or something right. like yeah. that. It's not so a crazy it's, amount it's of not time. A, it's not crazy, but it's, um, but it's also going to depend on the time of year. We're, we're going to be... Next summer. Next summer. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So you start getting close to when the schools open and, yeah. and all the schools are buying stuff and the new buildings that are opening up and everybody's trying to get things done for when the first day of school is. And get into that same thing, then you're going to need another couple of weeks added on to it. But to Alan's point, if we open the doors minus all our soft seating because we're waiting for two more weeks, there's certainly been worse things that can happen. Yeah. Yes, to yes. Us. yes. And it's, it's, it's so. usually something. I think yeah. when Hawkinson opened, they didn't have any trash cans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. One other little yeah. thing. It's what we call a soft opening. Yeah. 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 Yes. And, it, and it all. So mo not, most optimistically, where do you see us um, by January 1st, 2020? Do you see concrete poured, things framed? You know, if, if we're demoing this building next door in July. We like, should be closed it, it, up. They should be closed, yeah. Up. Yeah. closed yeah. up. So it should be buttoned up for the winter. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you're not dealing with winter. concrete yeah. when it's cold no, and pouring right. all that. Yeah. Okay. It's possible to still have plastic over the windows. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't. Plastic, plastic, right? plastic windows? The plastic windows. Plastic windows. Because they have a metal yeah. roof. Yeah. <laughs> plastic windows. Plastic. Oh, yeah, how much would it be for us? Yeah, that's right. Do we price that up? If they need a tarp over the window, tarp. A thick oh, one, like a really thick tarp. How much would that be? I've seen it. For 20 years? Yeah. I've seen it. All right, so I'm going to try to find these these times, especially given that it's election week, and I know there's a trustee meeting, um, and when is the town meeting? Is it the last Thursday of May? First Thursday. First Thursday of May, thank you. I knew it was May okay, so we're not going to run into that. Okay. All right, so, I, so I'm just going to basically find a meeting in two weeks, basically, and then a meeting on June 3rd, and then something in between that I'm not gonna schedule yet because I think we should see what's going on. Like if something comes up that we should meet about, I don't wanna sort of miss that window. Does that sound right, Phil, or should we just stick a third meeting in there? And no, that sounds okay. Yeah. I'm in the week of the eighth, I can do, at this point I can do every night except Wednesday. I can't do camp on Wednesday. Okay, so either eight, nine, 11. Okay. Okay. If everybody has their calendars, we can try to do it now. I just can't promise you the ninth because I have to check with Joanne and see if that's something that she can do um, with in terms of like deal with the 
Do polls close at 8? Yeah, mm -hmm. 8 o'clock. That's late for... That is kind of late. Yeah, but for the bell. Yeah. <laughs> And then the other choice is the Thursday, which is the 11th, and that's not good for you, right, I, Patrick? I, I can do either. I can do the Thursday. I can't. Okay. We're going to need to have Mark and Phil here. Yeah, I yeah. think Mark and Phil, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 let them be here, here and yeah. whoever else can make it. <laughs> no, I'll be here. I mean, I can make the eighth. I can do any of them. I just know that the the ninth is going to be tough to pull off with so much other stuff going on. Mm -hmm. I agree. I would rather avoid it if we can. So April eighth so it is. Seven. Okay. April eighth is that a Monday? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So we will. Oh no, you close on seven on Monday. Seven on Monday. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you want to look at June 3rd while we're here, or nobody has anything? What day of the week? Uh, th that's a mon Monday, June 3rd. It's just the week of the June yeah. 3rd. Okay, do, you have your, do you have anything on your calendar yet for that week? It's good for me. We're a Tuesday group, but we're going to be on Monday. I mean, we typically do that. Yeah, we are typically a Tuesday group, so we, if the, I mean, does Tuesday the 4th work for folks? Sure. Yes, for me. It's my first Tuesday. Oh. Uh -oh. yeah. what, what better way? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you come to me, uh, you go out to eat by yourself. Really? Yeah. Come on early, early bird special. Yeah, go out at 4 o'clock. <laughs> Mark and Phil, does the 4 o'clock work for, yeah. for both of you? Yeah. Oh, so it's been the board for it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I know that in general Tuesdays are better. It's, I was just pointing that one Tuesday. So. Okay, so I guess that's done. So we'll meet on April 8th and June 4th, which is great. We can put it in the minutes, and then folks know. Um, and then so still looking, though, to schedule something in May. Yeah, I think well, I'll, I'll stick a meeting in there. I don't want us to just not meet and. Tentative. I yeah, te you know, some sort of tentative meeting. Um, but I think I'll, I'll wait because what if our timeline is off? So I'd rather just wait and schedule that sort of, you know, once the bids have gone out, then schedule well, the bids. It's likely to be a Monday or Tuesday anyway, right? Yeah. Okay. So it's not going to interfere with uh, any of the, uh, when's the Memorial Day? Is that 27th? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which would be a holiday, so. Yeah, it wouldn't be that far. It would be more, yeah, because we're basically yeah. going to go all of April yeah. now yeah. and all of May with no meeting. It yeah, just okay. seems like a long time yeah. not to just kind of yeah. reconvene and yeah. check in, and maybe this would be a nice mm -hmm. time to have someone from the capital campaign come and talk to us again and say, hey, this is where we are in our fundraising, sort of to your mm -hmm. point, Jack, of how much money do we have to work with. Um, you know, mm -hmm. by then that Dolly Gibbs thing will have happened, right? Isn't that in I May? Oh, we're not doing that. Well, no, I don't think they do it. Well, I think it's been yeah, they wow. yeah. They did? Yeah. Oh, I thought I it was wildly why. successful. Oh. Um, I think, I don't know all the reasons that they oh. shifted it, but they do change that. People know about the big quest. It was a big fundraising day here. I thought they moved it from December to May. Yeah. Was that was a big change. Years or three years yeah. ago. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, I don't know. They just, uh, it's, it my understanding is that they completely scrapped yeah. it. Yeah. 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 And then they moved it to May. Yeah, yeah. yeah I thought it was May. Yeah. yeah. It was. Yeah. Right. But that was also Kristen uh, Lutz was really spearheading that, and then she left and went to Valley Venture members. Mm -hmm. So I think, so I think they were just kind of reassessing what to do. Oh, okay. Just thinking about fundraising and another sort of big bump that we generally would have yeah. gotten. Okay. So we will just meet and basically do the same thing we did tonight <laughs> on April 8th, except with more information. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we're going to check the lighting at uh, so yeah. 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 Right. Th yeah. So that's, we're going to revisit the lighting. That's all the, on the list. We're going to have a look at it. Okay. What's up? I'll, I'll try to go down there. Great. Yeah. Yeah. The more people look at it. Yeah. Great. Well, any objections to adjourning?